The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, July uh, 26th, Friday. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time. 877-927-6648, number to call. You had a great show just a, mo a few moments ago with Tom and Daryl. Uh, just really good, both of them they had really good trades and discussed it very precisely and exactly what they were doing. Steve Rhodes um, came on first hour at 9 o'clock, gave a fabulous presentation, I believe, last night. I wasn't able to hear it, but I'm hoping to get to uh, hear it later on over the weekend. And uh, let's see. So today's Friday. Of course, Nico Johan uh, comes on straight after uh, my show. That's health. Yeah, that's it's good. Friday is a time you want to just stop and think about things. You want to get a good sense of, of, of your well-being and what you can do for it. And um, we're looking forward to that show. Then, of course, you've got Daryl coming back at 1. You've got uh, Dave White Coming on at, that's uh, on 2 o'clock, right? Yep, 2 o'clock. Dave White, so you've got fabulous programming here. And Dave, Dave is the, uh, the, the, the author of the software program, The Art of the Charts, and there have been some fabulous positions taken on that particular program. And, of course, 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock gets wrapped up with Tom O'Brien, once again, back in the seat and... Uh, just uh, giving us his perspective on what, what he's looking at, just fabulous uh, articulation of ideas. And, you know, all day, through the, through the throughout the week, we try here at TFN to give you uh, a sense of structure of what we're looking at, how we look at it. Um, education, knowledge. And knowledge is power. I mean, let's face it. Now, you've heard us all in uh, different ways talking about the market in this particular period. I use the um, I use the technique based on the Chapman Wave methodology. My CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology uses just a myriad number of techniques, but the simplest is to go from the lowest, most identifiable low bar. Look at the 120-minute chart here of the E-minis. From 1665.75, Right there on the 17th of July at 4 o'clock at the close, it starts to move up and it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, four peaks. And what I showed my subscribers to my opening call, very comprehensive look at the markets, uh, trades at uh, this particular, particular moment, we are uh, weighted way more to the downside. Uh, the bias is negative and uh, the, the lungs we have are still doing fine. In fact, um, one of them is even up to that, up 0.24%, percent when the market is essentially down, 80, 0.80 and 0.70 in the down the S&P. Um, uh, another one's down a penny. It's no big deal. And let's see, the other one we've got long. We've got three longs. Uh, it's down 12 cents, but it's still way above our entry point. So that's good. And uh, But the shorts are doing very nicely, and that's, that, is, to me, is very, very important. And we actually have some options on right now. We'll see if those are going to work out. Those are August options. So <clears throat> look at this technique. Four peaks to the upside, peak D is where you want to be careful. Right there, 60.95.75 of the E-minis starts on the way down. It's gone trough A, trough B on the way down, lowercase letters, not uppercase. Shows the down the down move, trough D nice bounce to 1689 uh, in the E minis from the 1671 low. Where does it come back to? It comes back to the low this morning so far of 1670.50, uh, just a dollar lower, but it's holding nicely. So it says, you know what? For the moment, we've got a little bit of a, a chance to move, but the technicals are very poor in the MACD and stochastic on the 120 minute chart. The, the, the daily is in an alternate count. I'm going to call it at least C for now, but it's subject to the S&P or the SPY. And if you look at the SPY, the SPY is in PE at 169.86. I have not, I've got, haven't even got a sell signal yet, even though we are basically short. Um, the S&P and the Dow, but we haven't got the signal. But I did it on the 120-minute chart, making a peak F, and then a ro rogue wave peak G at 169.86. Plop, it's pulling back. But until the S&P breaks decisively under 167, closes under that, 
I don't think I'm going to actually be able to put the down arrow on because I need for the MACD, that fast-moving average, to actually cross negative before I can do it. And the stochastic has to go under 80%, and it's at 86. So now this strength, look at this in my CD, introducing the Chaffin Wave methodology on slide 169 out of 476 slides. I talk about troughs, and I talk about troughs, but in this case, I wanted to show it not just for the troughs. I wanted to show these little circles and the rectangle that as long as the stochastic is above 80%, the price can hold quite well. And now let's put that together with the reality of what we're looking at. Here's the Dow chart. Look, the Dow, the MACD has not yet crossed negative, and the, st the stochastic is now at 88%. For the first time, it's turned down. And that's what I said to subscribers. I've got a peak E. I'm suspecting that the moment... We get a decide. We don't know yet. The day's not finished. In fact, it's barely begun. The moment we get a decisive close below the the wick of that candle of yesterday, and that low was uh, fifteen thousand four fifty five, then we can start thinking that the nine period exponential moving average is going to become a resistance. And why did I talk about it? Why was I prepared to go to the short side here, even though everything looks so good? Well. Besides the fact that I'm using the Chapman Wave methodology of where it gets to a D or an E, you've got to be really careful. And that's normally over there. That's normally where we start to get uh, pushed to the downside, at least pushed to the short side as a protective me measure first. And then as a position play, as soon as it starts to close below the 9 EMA, there was another moving average that I put on here just a couple of days ago. I never, I tried to keep this chart as clean as possible. I added one and I said, this one moving average is telling me that there's limited upside and there's a good chance that we're going to start towards the downside. So that's that. Now, I just want to talk about a couple of things I got. Uh, I'm going to just run the numbers because obviously it's really important to do the numbers right now. Don't see the numbers. Um, or I'll do it here. Let me just do this here. Um, I'll just grab this for one second. I'll do numbers, uh, daily charts. I got the numbers right here. The Dow is down 127 at 15,426. The S&P is down 12 at 16,078. In one second, we've got it. The Comp Index is down 18 at 3587. Now, this is really interesting. The GLD is down 120, at 127.31, down $1.36. But it is, I'm going to show the chart in a moment. It is holding really well with gold down about nine, nine, $10, uh, 9 to $10 at uh, 1319 uh, the silver is down 0.07 at 3 point uh, oops that was the wrong one uh, down 0.45 at 19.69 high grade copper is at 3.11 down 0.07 now what's really important about this whole thing is that if we look at bonds bonds are up almost a point 29.30 seconds this is going to be very important can the tail TLT is only at 0.37 can we see a more significant rally in bonds at this particular point. i try to get into it a little later on if we have time. Uh, uh, um, crude oil is down at uh, 104.24, down minus uh, 120. Now let's go to our first caller. We've got Sue in Bethesda, Maryland. Hi, Sue. How are you? Oh, Sue. Good, good morning. Is that Bethel, Mr. Bethel? Yes, it is. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Why, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I spoke with you yesterday, and then you said call you back about BAS and CLF. Yes. So, basically what we looked at, CLF came out with good earnings, right? And CLF, which is Cliff Natural Resources, and what I'd say to you is there's a good chance that we will get another leg up to make that what we call leg D. You know what I mean by the leg D, right? Uh, well, yeah. No, no, I don't think you do. Leg D means from the bottom that was made just the other day uh, uh, this, on the 5th of July at 15.41, there was a leg that went up and then it stopped. And that became what I call peak A. For those of you who are looking at Tiger TV, the left chart here is the daily chart. I'm going to open it up a little bit so that you can see it. I'm going to expand a little bit because it's very important. So there you've got peak A. At 1768 on the 12th of July. And what I'd say to you is the way that it's holding the nine period moving average, that's that black moving average right there, that thick line, was very uh -huh. good. And I said to you that the MACD 
that's the moving average convergence divergence all the words but we call it macd was very strong and the slow stochastic these are two moving averages were very good so i said to you it's acting well normally i would expect it to go above nineteen dollars and fifteen cents for that fourth leg to make leg d uh -huh. that's what my, that's in my methodology so that's done it very nicely what i said to you was also in the positions that you have if it started uh -huh. to slide and it went underneath the low of uh, I think I said seventeen ninety eight or seventeen ninety. You've got it. You've got it. Half of your position, at least, you've got to have some kind of a stop. And okay. well, now it's rallied. So now I like this chart very much. I'll uh -huh. explain. To, I, I'm, I'm going to do one at a time. So CLF, which is Cliff uh, Cliff's Natural Resources Inc., trading at nineteen dollars and forty seven cents, is up a uh -huh. dollar and seven cents. Now, what I'm going to suggest to you is some part of your position you've got to have a stop at about oh eighteen dollars and fifty cents because if it comes down again it could go it could go lower but uh -huh. so far it's acting very well uh -huh. so that's number one then the okay. other one you looked at was bas yeah, which oh, yeah. is another one may see how if what the legislation that i should take it off so what 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 are you what are you doing now with CLF? You still have yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right now it's nineteen something, but it would it legitimate that I should take it up? And you told me it stop at eighteen fifty. Right, eighteen fifty. I just be very careful because if it starts to come back down again very strongly, it could yeah. go all the way back to sixteen. You don't want to do that, right? Yeah, yeah but I would mainly. I was thinking that how about the legitimate? What what? How much it go up? I should take off. Okay, so now this is what I'm going to suggest to you. Now it's at 19.50, and the high today was 19 dollars and 86 cents. Uh huh. So I like the action, but when it gets to leg D, that's where you got to be a little bit careful. That's what oh, I'm I saying see. to you. So, what price did you get in at? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. You know. At nineteen dollars and fifty cents, a four dollar uh, pullback is about twenty percent. So I, that's a lot, but it's way better than when it was down at fifteen, right? Yes. So I don't want you to go through that. You see, I just, I don't want you to go through it again if it's going to go back all the way down. It just you don't. It's it's bad for your psychology. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just it. It's just not a position to be in. So I'm going to recommend two things. One is you have a stop on half your position uh -huh. at about 19. You know, we've got a break coming up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think it through, but you're also still in BAS, right? Yes. And that's gone down very sharp. You see, that's what you've got yes. to be afraid of. Did you yes, take something I'm really, off? I'm really lose a lot of money on BAS. Too. Yeah, I, I'll be back. We're going to be back. It's very important. We try to get you out of this mess. I'll be right back Thank with you. Sue, straight after this. Thank you so much. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Technicians are so I've just done a bunch of work on the charts here because it was very important that we were able to give uh, Sue the benefit of a little time because uh, something's working well and something's working not so well. So, so this is it. So, Sue, what I'm going to suggest yes. with with the CLF. Let's go back to CLF. So, CL. Yes. Oops. Let me just type that in here. CLF. CLF. It's. It's, there's a good chance it's just going to bump into some resistance here and pull back a little bit. I would like to see, if you had to ask me and you told me that you bought it at $17 or $18, I'd say to you hold it there because it looks very good. Put a stop on some part of it at about... Um, at about $18.32. If it goes under that, that's not going to be too, too good in the short term. But I think it started to turn around. So yes. you've held it for a while. Yes. I don't want you to give up this good chance of only having a three-point loss rather than a five- or a six-point loss. So uh -huh. half your position, please put a stop in somewhere around... Maybe 1850 to 1832 on half the position, at half least a half it, but, the position. Now the yeah. other one, be and then what I'm I would like to see is for CLF to have a rally that takes it towards the 20.50 to the 20.90 area sometime next week. If we can do that, 
That's really good action. Now you're going to be able to get a chance to at least see it get close to the 20s, you know, 21, 22 area. But now the other one, BAS, I, I, this was not good. It didn't even give you a chance. I don't know if you, did you take anything off this morning or not? No, I'm waiting to talk to you first. Oh, okay. Because, you know, I said if it pulls back underneath that level to take something off, now it's yes. trading at $12.28. You know, I, I'm very nervous about this stock. This is, um, uh, what is it called? Basic Energy Services. Uh, boy, I'm going to suggest, you know, I would prefer you to have money to be able to make money that you yes. see you to see this go down and you get stuck with a position that you can't trade because that's money that's stuck there and it keeps going down. So I'm going to suggest it's going to be hard for you to do because you've held it so long. Just yes. yes, just a couple of days ago it was nearly 15 and now it's 12, 28. Yes. I, you've got to take some money off from this one. So maybe half the position. I have to tell you, I'm very tough with myself. When I see something and it doesn't work, I get out. I'm gone. Okay. Because I, I know that I can make money. I can make 3%, 5%, It's not hard over a period of weeks to make that kind of money. But 20% is really tough to start because it, it's just not good for your mind. So, yeah. so take you'll make money. I know that you're you've been this a long time. You'll be able to get that money back. But I don't want you to sit there and see it go down to eleven and then ten and then what are you going to do? It's BAS I, is trading at twelve dollars and twenty nine cents down a dollar fifty. I'm going to recommend that you take. I would I would actually just get out of it. But if you want Please. to just get if you want to get out of half, okay. But I, my recommendation is I don't like what's going on. I, I would just get that money out, and I'd be looking for maybe a gold stock or something like that, a low-priced gold stock. You take a little bit of that money, you could put it in there, and if that gold stock moves up 20 or 30%, at least it's made up a little bit, and you can feel good because your mind is relaxing. You're enjoying the trade. This, you're not enjoying this, right? No, God. it's horrible. So I, I'm going to recommend this is the one that you want to get out of quickly. No, like I can't you tell you I, right now. Don't have to wait until the end of the day. Right? No, I, I wouldn't even wait. Uh, Twelve twenty-eight. It doesn't even have it bounced. It, I, I, this is not good action, and the weekly okay. chart is not good. And I, you know, if it does rally, okay. I'm just afraid that this stock could go much lower. So that's my recommendation. Take Thank at least you. something off. Okay, I appreciate that so much, the, the best. Okay. Thank you so much for your help. It's my pleasure. So and you know, you might want to consider if you if you if you want, you could consider trying my my service because we've got some very nice stocks that have moved up very nicely, and we've got stocks that we are short now that are doing very nicely on the downside. So you might okay. want to think about having other ideas. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. And I'm sorry that they're going down. At least the one is working better. Thank you. Yes, we'll thank be back, so folks. Much. Thank you, Sue. Have thank a good weekend. You. So we'll be thank back, you. folks. Thanks. The Dow is down 128. S&P is down 1175. I'll be right back. I'd like to take your calls, but I'm also going to discuss a couple of things. Part of that trends what stuff I love to do, I'm going to do it today. I'll talk about a Porsche, and I'll talk about Stevie Cohen. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals, and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Target Editions. I want to go through a couple of things here. <laughs> a while back, maybe it's, I know it was earlier this year, and I definitely know it was last year, but I started discussing this I'm pretty sure it was just over three years ago. I think it was like four years ago. And what I'd said is, I've begun to see something that I hadn't seen before. I've always looked, I just always have been fascinated by car design. It's, I've never, it hasn't appealed to me of, of, you know, owning a real fancy car. It's never, it's not, it got nothing to do with that. It has to do with just appreciating style, function, and I've always studied automobiles in terms of, if I did something about six, seven years ago where I discussed the 1960s and design and how the front bumper and rear bumper weighed as much as the car. And that was, the, the, the peaks then coincide with the peaks in the market, how automobile engines coincide with peaks. I remember in 2000 talking about the SUVs. We didn't call them SUVs. Those big boxes, that, they, they were the biggest vehicles we had ever seen that, that people could go to the supermarket in. Uh, it was just unwieldy. It looked ridiculous, and that was the market top. So I've always been fascinated. And I discussed here, it had nothing to do with, uh, um, it had everything to do with gender, but nothing to do with uh, uh, personal opinion. It was just observation. And what I said is, I've noticed a trend that I'd never seen before. Oh, I'd seen it in isolated cases, but not as a trend. And I talk about a trend where every... Uh, I just keep seeing more and more and more and more of these things. I'm not taking statistics. 
I'm not looking at it. And the trend was that I had seen more and more women, in particular it looked like younger women, driving very expensive cars, but especially sports cars. And then I discussed it in terms of convertibles. And I said, look, I, this is just an observation. Uh, it, it, yeah, you could kind of come underneath uh, the, the, the auspices of, of opinion, but it's opinion based on observation. Well, today there was an interview on CNBC, which I just happened to, to, to look up, and I, I saw something about Porsche. I, I, I put the uh, volume on. And it said that Porsche, uh, this is one of the most successful years. They're up about 30% this year. And that this is the most number of women that they've had ever that are buying Porsches. Now, this could, of course, include the SUV because it's that family vehicle that it's really important to be able to go to Whole Foods a mile away from your house and drive a $67,000, $47,000 vehicle. You know how important that is. Um, So this comes under the auspices of fashion and also observation. And it's very telling. There are aspects of it that I'm going to talk about later on. I just want you to bring it up once more because this time was the first time I've actually heard it mentioned uh, publicly that women are, in fact, buying more and more vehicles. I have discussed Harley Davidson. I did that a long time ago, that there were more and more women and uh, middle-aged to older than middle-aged men uh, driving Harleys, which was not the generation, that was not the generation that we thought of earlier on, but um, it was also the generation that now includes, um, other than what we would call bikers per se, um, it includes people that have, um, who are very wealthy, have uh, uh, everything, and now they've included the motorbike as part of their, their, their vehicle uh, array. And, um, and they, like to, they like to go out, but it's only uh, you know, periodically. It's like their boat. That's something completely different. The fact that women are, dr- are dr- uh, riding motorbikes more and buying sports cars has a connotation that I'll talk about later on. I wanted to just set it in place. That's number one. Number two is I wanted also to talk about... Um, I, I've discussed this so often. I'm only going to mention it here because we will. I'll get a gauge on figures later on. I'll, I'll find somewhere where I can get the statistics. But um, we've got modern art. Modern art. The prices are unbelievable. How do you gauge a piece of modern art? When I go to a museum and I see a blue painting and it's uh, uh, 14 by 22 and it's just blue. I have a tough time. I understand that the museum was forced to buy a Rothko, whatever it is, because it's a famous guy and all that stuff, and this is what they could afford and all that. happens to be the blue painting that anybody could have done, but it's called the Rothko, and it's going for $21 million, all that stuff. But I'm not sure what the benchmarks are. There, it's very difficult in the art book, art book because it's so subjective. It becomes objective later on because you've got benchmarks of the Gauguins in this range or that price, etc. But it's still a made-up figure that fluctuates a great deal. And that is part of our economic barometer, stock market barometers. So I'll be talking about that. And then Stevie Cohen, just briefly before I take calls, um, in terms of... Um, uh, my partner and I were, uh, um, uh, Stevie Cohen, SA, SAC was a client of ours uh, in the 1990s. And when, when I went there the first time, my, my partner had gone before that, uh, and I, I then joined him, and I went um, on the second visit, I think it was. And I looked at him, I said, gee, he looked very, very young. In fact, we made a little joke, he looked like a bar mitzvah boy. Um, uh, just really young. He was not that young. He just looked very young. The reason why I said that is because of his phenomenal understanding of markets. I am actually shocked to hear about this, the insider trading in his firm. I have no idea why someone like that would do they, yeah, I think it, it behooves uh, SAC to put the number of trades. There must be millions of trades up and show how many were in fact under the indictments were in fact there. I am shocked because I don't know why he even needed to do it. Well, I don't know if he did, but why the firm even needed to do that because they were brilliant. I mean, they they put on trades that were absolutely in the in the in the same firm. I know for a fact that he's. Money fund managers were doing one thing, 
and he could be doing the exact opposite during the day. So, and I, you know, how, could that all be incidents? Not inside. I mean, some of it is just sheer the artistry of uh, managing the markets. I think so. I, I'm actually kind of shocked. I'm going to take the facts that, that, that you know it is, but I, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying I don't know why would they would even need to do that. You know, it's when it's when you hear of a, a, a multimillionaire on their taxes uh, putting in a deduction for their underwear. It's just I don't want to mention any names. We've already had uh, we we know there are people that have done that, but I'm always shocked. So this is just a, a real surprise because this guy was really really good. Uh, I mean, I don't. What I'm saying is, I don't know why they even needed to go that far. I think they were just good without it. Now, some people might say they were good because of it. I, I, I just don't see that. I mean, they, anyway, I wanted to just say that because sometimes things happen in the market that are a complete surprise. And to me, in a way, this this was a surprise. So uh, now I'm going to go straight, right back to our callers, and I want to go along to um, Mike in Long Island. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, Basil. Uh, first, when if you see any of these women on driving Porsches, can you give me a call? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next <Okay>. question. <laughs> I'm the liquidators. Uh, you asked me to call you back on this. They yeah, reported after, earnings. Uh, so they, they reported think? earnings. The earnings must have been good because it popped up to leg E, and now I've got in the in the weekly chart. So leg E now it's peak E in in the daily chart. LL is the symbol, trading at ninety two point six six up point eight, and in the in the. Oh, you see, there are a couple of charts like this where I just have to go with the short term because the longer term I have an alternate wave count and I have nothing yet negative in the uh, if anybody's looking at my charts you'll see that I keep typing in letters and they keep moving to the symbol bar uh, trade stations not resolved that problem yet I hope they do very soon uh, so what I'm looking at is in the weekly chart I'm calling this not a I'm calling it e slash a because everything about the technical suggests that there should, in fact, be some kind of a pullback coming up over the next two to three weeks, and then I can assess what ex exactly it is. Because if it drops from 92.67 in the next two, three weeks to under 82, or around, I'd say 82, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to call that peak E because the stochastic MACD will be turning down again. Now, the question was whether to short, not to short, what to do. And I had said that I prefer to step aside. Let's see how the earnings come out. And then I might make the decision that, no, it's not a short, although it could be a very short-term short. It's maybe a longer-term buy. So that's really my thinking right now. I want to clear it out. I don't want to be locked into any position. The MACD is very strong on the daily chart. The stochastic is still at 78%. It's not quite 80%, but it's, it's holding quite nicely. On balance volume is lagging, and the relative strength index is more confirming the rally than looking at the downside. And the fact that it's the second session after the earnings report, and that it did fill the gap yesterday, then closed inside the gap, and now it's making a higher high. Means that that technique that you know about, that I've discussed very often, that within a particular flag formation, you can get what I call a rectangle formation that requires a time that is suggesting the magnet of the high bar. In this case, it's the high of... 90, oh, round number 96. Isn't that nice? Did you notice that it was a round number? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, round number high. So that's going to be really important. All-time high at a round number, just like uh, Starbucks, I think it was. Was it Starbucks that uh, someone just recently had had the high? I've got it written down here somewhere. A high, even discussed it. Oh, Dunkin' Donuts made a high, a round number high, and it's pulled back from that high. Within this, the 120-minute chart could make a peak A. It's already making an A. I don't know if it's going to be a peak A in the next couple of 92.85, 93.18, yeah. If it doesn't cross 93.18 in this bar, it's going to be peak A. And then I suspect it's going to move a little higher. And the real thing is, how does it clear 94.26, the high of the 24th? If it does that, it's going to retest close to 96. I'm going to suggest doing nothing right now. 
It's going to take at least until Monday afternoon. It could even be Tuesday before I get a sense of whether it's going to try to climb to the old high. This particular technique, I'm going to make it, make it a little bit darker so that you can see, says that within the, the spike up to peak D, and that doji candle, the long-legged doji candle, there should be a new move in a shorter time frame than the daily, and in this case it's the 120-minute chart, that should go peak A, peak B, peak C, and even to a D, and that should go close to, exactly at, or slightly above the previous high of, in this case, 96 round number high. And at that point, you've got a much better chance if you start a short at within a point or so of that high, then you've got a much greater chance of being in the right turnaround uh, situation as well as being able to say, now I've got time on my hands as it pulls back to be able to gauge whether or not I can add to the position or whether this is a short-term pullback because the longer term in this case, the monthly, which is in leg G slash C and has nothing technically wrong with it, whether I want to switch to a buy on number liquidators. So hold off. Let's talk again maybe today's Friday, maybe Tuesday. Check it out. It could even be Wednesday. Count the peaks. The only thing I would say is in that time, if it, if it undercuts 90.31, immediately start a short. Okay. Okay, so hey, do, do you, one more question. The, you know, on Caterpillar, do yep. you look at that ever? Always. You do. Look, you do use that as a tell. Yeah, peak D in the Chapman wave in the in the in the daily chart. It looks like it wants to test the main thing about Caterpillar trading at eighty one point five eight CAT. If it closes under eighty point eighty six in the daily, that's not only going to be uh, very poor for the weekly. It's going to be very f poor for the monthly, making a very big arch formation. But I'm going to suggest that between seventy and the low of sixty seven. At any point, if it starts, to, in fact, I'm not going to go that low. I'm going to say the big test will be at 78.25, the low of uh, July of 2012. So right. at this point, it's negative. I know, uh, what's his name, who's a fantastic short seller, is looking for it to go, yeah, looking for it to go way down. I'm just going step by step. I have a, a pretty serious sell signal in it, in it, but it's getting real close to uh, the 70, 79 to 80, 78 area where that's going to be the real test for me. Okay. So thank you for calling. Have a great thank weekend, you. Michael. You too. Thank you. Let's go to Steve in Orlando. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi. Hi, Basil. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Basil, I'm, I'm kind of new to your Chapman Wave. Um, I really like it, though. Um, I'm finding it's helping me out quite a bit. I was Fabulous. wondering if you could do a wave count for CAMP for me. In the what time? For monthly, weekly, or what? All three, if you could. Okay, so then let's do this. We'll do this together live because this is Technical Friday and we like to do things to be able to demonstrate this fabulous technique called the Chapman Wave, if I allow myself a little immodesty. Um, and we're going to go to the low bar in the weekly chart. CAMP is CalAMP Core. I have no idea what they do. It doesn't matter. Point forty one is the low. What do they do? Uh, they're telecommunications. Ah, okay. I'm I'm liking many of the telecommunication stocks at this particular point. Okay, this the little break gives me a chance to redo. Uh, I mean, to do the charts. Take me two seconds. I'll discuss it when we get back. And oh, I've just done the monthly in leg E. Oh, this is going to be fascinating. All right, we'll be back straight after this with Stephen Orlando. We're going to talk about Camp C A M P trading at forty dollars seventy three cents, down forty one, Dow's down a hundred. Recently. Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Nowhere, spelled N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. At one point, we've all been there. Whether it be our health, career, or our finances, some might be there right now. So where are you when it comes to your trading and investing? Better yet, where would you like to be? The good news? I can take you from nowhere to now here right now. Same letters, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, just a totally different emphasis and focus. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on July 25th at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to share with you a trading strategy that I began on May 10th when the S&P was at 1627 and closed at the same price eight weeks later. That's right, the S&P went nowhere versus a trading strategy that produced a 100% hypothetical return at that same period of time and it's now here for you subscribers to my daily newsletter service mastering probability have free access to this exciting live workshop the trend is your friend all the details are on the home page of tfnn.com decisions shape your destiny and your trading destiny is now here for you learn about good health and fitness living a primal lifestyle with nico and page next on tfnn Folks, take, take an opportunity to listen to Nico and Paige. It's just a fabulous show about your health. Not just They go into so many areas. I mean, you know, just like we try to be experts in our field, they're experts in theirs, and they go into areas that I just didn't even know existed, and it's so enlightening. So we are looking at CAMP, C-A-M-P. I'm going to show the chart. If you're looking at Tiger TV, what we've got here is in the monthly chart, I've got this very clearly as far as I can tell, um, a, a leg E, and the candle that's forming is a troublesome candle. Um, it's the start of a consolidation. But the fact that we've still got a couple of, uh, about a week to go before the end of the month, says to me, okay, don't make a decision about that because the technicals are still very strong, 93% in the stochastic, MACD is still very good. So let's just say that the monthly chart is a very strong, but it's just starting to show signs of technical uh, weakness in one particular uh, indicator right, and that right now is the on-balance volume is suggesting that we're getting close to some kind of a top. In the weekly chart, we've had two buy signals. One went to a peak E from the low of point uh, two, 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 2.60 back in uh, the, the week of September the 9th, 2011, and it went to peak E at um, June of 2012, pulls back, starts a brand new buy mode at, uh, let's see, this is... Um, at 6.95 on the 24th, week of the 24th of August, goes to peak A, B, C, D, and now it's an E. E starting to pull back with the MACD, just starting to tip down a little bit. Stochastic still at 88%, but the MACD, the relative strength 
all of the different indicators have started to turn down with the price over the last two weeks, suggesting that it's at 14.72, but 14.25 is going to be absolutely important for the nine period moving average support. Now we get to the weekly chart. I've got the weekly chart. It's an alternate count. It's just a little bit more complex than one would normally find. I could, in fact, make a case A, B, C, D. In fact, I'm going to do this because it just... Uh, it'll make it a little clearer. I'm going to do this and I'm going to make it. That's the start of the new move. That's an A minus. But right here, uh, right here, that's an A. That's another A. And I wish to change the color. I'm going to take a moment and change the color so that you can see the alternate. So if you have a chance to look at this, uh, Steve, I'm going to give you, there's an alternate count. This is one of the few times where it gets, I wouldn't say complicated because it works both ways. But I'm going to go with the preference if I can get it to print. B right there, C right there. So I've got an, two alternative, two counts. Both of them make a top right at uh, 16.47 on the 9th of July. And now it's going into leg C to the downside with the MACD and stochastic pulling back. Do you have any position in this at all? Uh, Steve, you there? Uh, oh, Steve must be listening. Oh, Steve is listening now. Um, okay, if Steve, if you're listening, the candle that I'm looking at on the 28th of June, this is a kind of a Roman candle with a long wick. My suggestion is if, you, if you're in it, be a little careful here because there's a good chance it's going to be pulling back. And if it gets into the 14.28 area, it could retest all the way down to 1381. My thinking right now is that 1426, the nine period moving average in the uh, weekly chart, as well as that midpoint into the candle that we're looking at right now, 1426, the whole 1420s is the area to watch diligently. So I'm showing the count now. I'm going to do it so that if you want to take a picture of it right there, that's the daily. If you want to take a picture of it just for learning purposes of the weekly, I'm expanding it right there. Take the picture. And if you want the monthly, there oops, that was a mistake. You need to put the error. So we've got it. Oh, that's the end of the show. Wow, I want to talk about the VIX. I want to talk about yesterday I had a technique that I call the Chapman Wave Chin Gauge. It gave a suggestion that there'd be weakness today before there was a rally attempt. And we've got that weakness and we've had a bit of a rally attempt. We'll see. Now, as far as I'm concerned, so far is, is not yet giving the sell signal, but we are short in my opening call and we are short the S&P. We'll see what happens. Have a fantastic weekend. Check my service out and I'll be back on my days. Profits and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.